The Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has reached Ahmedabad on a two-day visit. The visit is part of the 12th India-Japan annual dialogue, but Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Shinzo Abe would also launch the Asia-Africa Growth Corridor, as also lays the foundation for India's first bullet train. The two leaders have met ten times in the last three years, and this will be Modi Abe's fourth annual meeting since 2014. Prime Minister Modi and Shinzo Abe will set out on a nine-kilometer roadshow to Mahatma Gandhi's Sabaramati Ashram. Later in the evening, the two leaders will visit a 16th-century mosque where the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, will personally explain the rich heritage and architecture to Shinzo Abe. The Japanese Prime Minister has reached Ahmedabad, where the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, was waiting for him. The Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, is on a two-day visit. There is a lot on the table to talk about between two nations who are witnessing a very friendly wave of relations since, since years, and especially since 2014, the year when the Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, was elected. They will talk about defense and the possible exchange of amphibious technology. They will also talk about economic cooperation and technology exchange and enhancing the skills of the both countries. Of course, Make in India will definitely have a place in their speech. What you're watching right now on your television screen is reaching us live. This is directly what is happening right now in Ahmedabad. The Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, and the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, met and they are together now starting the nine kilometers drive to reach the uh, ashram made famous by the father of the Indian nation, Mahatma Gandhi. We can see that Shinzo Abe, perhaps to honor the, get the hosts, is wearing a, a so-called Nero jacket in light blue, which is a traditional Indian cloth. Perhaps this is to honor the friendship of two countries which are coming closer and closer since many years and especially since uh, the beginning of the office of the Prime Minister of India, the current Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. The two countries uh, recently have also agreed on the construction of India's first bullet train. It will connect uh, for 500 kilometers Ahmedabad and Mumbai. It is uh, the first of its kind in India, a country which relies enormously for the movement of its people on the railways. The train will travel at more than 250 kilometers per hour and it will reduce the distance between the cities at two hours. The two will obviously also talk perhaps about what is happening in the international scenario. It is impossible to think that North Korea will not be on their table on, within their talks and also the elephant in the room will be China. China is neighboring both countries and on the paper the Chinese media did welcome these meetings, but the very fact that they felt the necessity to welcome a meeting between two of the neighboring countries speaks volume about the attitude that China is having towards whatever happens in what it considers to be its own sphere of influence. And China will be following very closely also because recently India and China had a problem to say so. At the Doklam, it was a standoff lasted for nearly for more than two months. Uh, sorry, and it was resolved peacefully. But still, many problems are on the border, and the border disputes between the two countries are not settled. And the getting closer and closer to Japan means that India is continuing on the look east policy, trying to strengthen its bilateral alliances with all possible Asian nations. These to develop the idea of making India and especially with Japan, the talks will be on this very matter. But to a certain extent, Japan was also uh, had also anticipated the vision of uh, uh, the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, of making India. In fact, uh, the Japan car uh, constructor, Maruti Suzuki, has been producing cars in India for many years and for many Indians for that matter. And Maruti Suzuki has been the first car they owned. 
Now, in the streets of the subcontinent, in the streets of India, everywhere, the Maruti Suzuki is perhaps the most common car. Now, we were talking about what China would have said and listen in at what the Chinese Foreign Ministry said about the visit of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, Prime Minister of Japan in India. Chinese Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-Chinese-
it is uh, you know focusing on the business side of things just for that one day that is tomorrow today is more of uh, you know cultural exchange uh, with the prime minister taking uh, the visiting dignitaries to both sabarmati ashram and that mosque in the evening so uh, if you look at it you know it's it's a short visit but having said that the fact is that new delhi is the center of power and uh, i suppose in some ways if we are to dissect it it could be uh, you know another uh, display of prime minister modi's intentions of doing things differently i mean uh, this uh, might have been planned to give gujarat his home state uh, a, a bit of attention and uh, of course gujarat has also been uh, uh, often uh, proclaimed for its uh, you know uh, uh, the gujarati uh, commitment to business if you will and uh, so perhaps this is part of that meeting that uh, agenda in some ways so i guess i mean i'm wagering a guess at this point uh, the fact that new delhi's been skipped is pretty significant and what is on the table what is likely to be the most important subject of the two prime minister who at the end of the day represent the two prominent countries in the asian scenario will talk about Well, your guess is as good as mine, Daniele. But uh, I think uh, the agenda is pretty clear. This is an attempt to uh, further strengthen a relationship which is uh, time-tested. Of late, also India and Japan have found themselves on the same side when it comes to uh, political conversations on the global scale. I'm talking about North Korea, for instance. Uh, Japan, of course, uh, has its concerns being so close to North Korea. The fact that uh, the last ICBM uh, missile test flew. over the japanese island of hokkaido just goes to show the kind of stress that japan is dealing with when it comes to this ongoing uh, war of words between the united states and north korea and india has uh, come out quite strongly in condemnation of uh, north korea so on that side yes they are aligned and again when it came to the doklam uh, standoff if you remember japan was one of the few countries that spoke up um and made its position on the stand of very clear and said that india was well within its rights to uh, stand up for a third party for an ally like bhutan and that uh, it had to protect its sovereignty at the end of the day there is also a lot of space for defense cooperation india is looking forward to more technology and perhaps more presence within the frame of uh, the make in india so that is also likely to be uh, in the talks isn't it Absolutely, and uh, you know that that relationship between India and Japan isn't something of new. Uh, it dates back to uh, many, many decades ago. In fact, uh, earlier when we were speaking with Ramesh, I brought up the fact that uh, the Maruti Suzuki, right. for instance, that ubiquitous uh, uh, transport form of transport in India was. Uh, Uh, there was a huge japanese hand in that and it changed really speaking the uh, the landscape of transportation for the average indian in the country right. and now of course uh, we've got those visuals back on our screen of that cavalcade making its way through uh, ahmedabad and i'm also told that, that uh, on the phone line we are joined by ramesh ramachandra who is currently exactly precisely where perhaps the caro with the prime minister of japan and uh, the prime minister of india is passing ramesh if you can hear me give us a sense of what is going on what is the mood on the ground of the people well clearly uh, starting from my vantage uh, i can uh, see a crowd of people thronging the square uh, where i am at the moment all the people waiting have to face for the motor train to pass them by which will take the two travelers to travel to the Narendra Modi to pass the session to Ali to their first official engagement here in Ahmedabad this afternoon and that will be a visit to the Sabal Mati Ashram uh, of uh, made famous by the Mahatma Mahatma Gandhi the father of the Indian nation followed by a visit to the 15th century mosque for city sites in Delhi so that will be his engagement uh, for uh, today and uh, that will be tracked by a formal official dinner towards the end of the evening but tomorrow will be the operated part and just to give you a flavor of the mood uh, here where i am at the moment i can see men women children of all ages from all walks of life often those students and also business persons who have closed down their establishments because of the security restrictions here in and about city all along the 8 kilometer route which will take the two passengers from the airport the tower of the ashram so really a lot of uh, turnout you know good uh, turnout here at the park city today and also all along the 8 kilometer route uh, along which there will be at least 18 uh, stage shows that will be performed by school children of various ages all dressed in traditional uh, 
clothing and attire and uh, performing dances and music to uh, Gujarati, uh, Gujarati traditional uh, music. Really, a lot of uh, festive uh, fervor here on display in Ahmedabad is not known even as people wait in anticipation for the golden gate of, or for the roadshow of Prime of Modi and Abe to pass the by there. Right, thank you very much. This was Ramesh Ramachandra directly on the ground in Gujarat following uh, the route that the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, and the Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, are driving on. And I have to go back now to my colleague Aisha Sindhu. Another thing, Aisha, talking about bullet trains, which is perhaps the most adventurous uh, uh, entrepreneurial uh, action that Japan is taking on Indian soil, this is definitely something... Uh, very much new for India. Absolutely. Uh, as and when it uh, comes up, it will be the first of its kind uh, in India, uh, um, Daniele. And of course, uh, you know, the fact is that most of India travels by train. So this is a huge uh, step forward for a number of people. Uh, also, Japan has invested heavily in uh, this uh, corridor between Mumbai and Ahmedabad. The journey currently takes seven hours and once the bullet train is up and running, it's going to cut that travel time by five hours, reducing it to just two. And again, this is a, it's very strategic when you think of business because, uh, you know, Mumbai is the hub of uh, uh, finance in India. It's the hub of uh, business in India and Ahmedabad too uh, does attract a lot of uh, uh, business opportunities for a number of people so connecting these two uh, centers of business in some ways is strategic and uh, Japan is going to have a very strong hand in doing all that the loan that's been advanced to India for the construction of uh, this project is uh, it's, a, it's a huge amount and uh, Japan has extended that money to India at a very minimal uh, rate of interest of 0.1 percent so it's a win-win in many ways uh, for India it's also helped uh, the uh, government sort of uh, keep naysayers at bay, uh, you know, because uh, the, the rate of interest over here is far lesser than anything that would have been advanced to India by any other world body uh, or by the World Bank, for instance. So, uh, yes, uh, uh, coming back to your question, it is, it is very strategic when you look at that relationship between India and Japan, the fact that uh, Japan is advancing the kind of technology India needs to sort of take that leap into uh, uh, transport of the future. And Aisha, if I may, for the benefit of our international viewers, what kind of state is the western coastal state of Gujarat? Could you repeat that question for me, Daniel? Yes, what kind of state is the western coastal Indian state of Gujarat? Well, it's a, it's a very vibrant state, uh, Daniele. It is the home state of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And... Uh, of course, it's, uh, it's along uh, the western coast of India. It uh, has a very uh, historic uh, significance when you look at uh, uh, looking back at India's pre-colonial history and, of course, uh, after the arrival of uh, different colonial powers in India. I'm talking about the Portuguese, the Dutch, the British. Uh, Surat, uh, of course, in Gujarat was a very, very uh, strategic uh, part in the relationship between uh, India and uh, Britain. Uh, in fact, Surat was uh, the hub of all uh, uh, shipping activity in India before uh, Bombay, or uh, as it was known at this point in time, was handed over to the British by the Portuguese. Once that happened, there was a movement of business communities from Surat to Mumbai. So uh, when you look at India's advancement in terms of uh, Business, uh, Gujarat has played a very strategic part in uh, India's pre- uh, and post-colonial history. And uh, even today, Gujarat, uh, Gujarati people are known for their business acumen. I mean, uh, if you look at the Forbes list and you look at the number of uh, Indian businessmen who make their way into uh, uh, the Forbes list of uh, billionaires, many, many of right. them happen to be Gujaratis. Thank you. I'm joined again by Ramesh Ramachandran, who's currently in Gujarat following the path of the two prime ministers, uh, the Japanese Shinzo Abe and the Indian prime minister Narendra Modi. A lot to talk between these two leaders, Ramesh, and it's impossible not to think about North Korea. Indeed, Daniel, it's been uh, nearly 45 minutes since Prime Minister Abe landed here in Ahmedabad from the 12th annual summit between India and Japan. And one can expect both leaders to discuss bilateral, regional, and global issues of mutual concern 
And to my mind, almost on the kind of, on the agenda of Kabe would be his region and his neighborhood, especially crisis of training of the Korean citizens as we speak in light of the North Korean missile and in the attempt of training. North Korea will not be far from his mind, and one can expect the discussions on North Korean issue between Prime Minister Abe and Modi. Remember, Japan sees it as an existential threat in terms uh, of, its, uh, of its relations with North Korea, especially in light of the, the strategic test by the North Korean regime. Remember, Japan and North Korea do not have diplomatic relations, but that said, in spite of its handicap, Prime Minister Abe has, in the recent past, spoken of leaders and even traveling to Pyongyang or uh, talking to the North Korean leadership to de-escalate tensions on the Korean Peninsula. From India's perspective, India looks at North Korea purely from the perspective of uh, nuclear proliferation. And uh, without the naming Pakistan, Indian statements in recent past have spoken about the threat posed by proliferation and uh, the complicity of Pakistan in the North Korean strategic nuclear really A lot of stake for both India and Japan on the issue of North Korea in particular. But that says that all the issues are in the world, especially the Indian Pacific region and the need for both countries to have uh, some sort of a security architecture. Remember, both, both India and Japan are members of the Alpha Naval Exercise, but also include the US. And there is talk about Australia being joined, wanting to join the, the product of working positions of quadrilateral arrangements, but uh, India is uh, different on the issue. But then, as far as India, Japan is concerned, all uh, all India, Japan, and US are uh, contesting naval exercises to reach the ground federally. And that is my point. It will be another point for the discussion with the two leaders on the B3 and the Bar of two. Okay, we will reconnect as soon as possible with our correspondent Ramesh Ramachandra, who is currently in Ahmedabad and uh, tracking uh, what uh, the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, and the Prime Minister of Japan will talk about in this short two-day visit that the Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, is paying to India. Aisha, coming back to my colleague now in the newsroom for more on this story. Uh, it is no mystery that in order to support the idea of development that the Prime Minister has, India needs more energy. One of the ways through which this energy can come is nuclear power. Is that likely to be within the talks of the two Prime Ministers? Well, uh, going by the official statement, uh, Daniele, in terms of what is expected, uh, you know, there are three key areas that uh, India and Japan are going to be talking and uh, you know uh, engaging in uh, come tomorrow that is of course the Asia Africa growth corridor uh, the uh, of course the laying of the foundation stone for the bullet train as you mentioned a short while ago so beyond those commitments of course uh, whenever India and uh, Japan or India and any other country really speaking are going to engage there's going to be a slew of uh, different areas of cooperation that are probably going to come up uh, as far as uh, you know nuclear energy goes uh, given Japan's uh, history with uh, and its uh, state uh, status uh, or rather stated stance on uh, uh, nuclear powers is uh, it's a, it's a good question. I'm not really certain of whether or not it's going to come up uh, for conversation. We'll have to wait and uh, watch on how exactly things progress on that front. Thank you very much. I'm told that again we uh, were able to reach Ramesh Ramachandra, our correspondent currently in Ahmedabad, uh, tracking the latest uh, about the visit of the Japanese Prime Minister, Shin, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to India. Ramesh, thanks again for joining us. As I was asking Aisha, Nuclear energy, is that on the table of the two prime ministers? Absolutely, Daniel. No, no doubt about the fact that civil nuclear energy cooperation will be a key point of discussion between the two prime ministers when they hold their delegation level talks here in Ahmedabad tomorrow afternoon. Remember, the Japanese parliament recently, a few months ago, okayed and approved the civil nuclear cooperation agreement with India. And that, to my mind, was a key landmark in, uh, in, in paving the way for future civil nuclear cooperation between Japan and India. Remember, many Japanese conglomerates 
such as Hitachi, Toshiba, Mitsubishi, all are interested in, uh, in, a, in getting a share of the nuclear pie, as it were, uh, after the India-U.S. Uh, civil nuclear pact. So clearly, a lot of stake for Japan also from the civil nuclear energy cooperation talks here in Ahmedabad. From India's perspective, Daniele, India will be looking forward to learn from Japanese technology, in, especially in the area of closed fuel cycle reprocessing of nuclear fuel. Remember, the Rakosho nuclear reprocessing plant in Japan is seen by many nuclear experts in India as a possible template uh, which India can use in the years ahead to reprocess the spent nuclear fuel, uh, which comes out of the closed fuel cycle, which uh, India is, uh, is incorporating into its uh, nuclear energy program. So clearly, uh, as you, to answer your question, Daniel, civil nuclear cooperation will be a key item of discussion between the two leaders here in Ahmedabad.